Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 44 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to record and edit MIDI or region automation, specifically automation for the modulation wheel and other continuous controllers, as well as pitch bend. Now you might recall from a previous video that pitch bend is not actually a continuous controller, but rather its own unique MIDI message. But in terms of MIDI automation, Pitch bend is essentially treated just like any other form of MIDI automation or any other continuous controller. So in this video, I'm gonna focus mainly on the pitch bend and modulation wheel, and I'll show you how I use these together in tandem to create more interesting synth parts. I find this especially helpful for synth leads like this. Before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a music maker, a producer, or a mixing engineer, and you're sick of digging through emails for production notes and feedback, you've gotta check out boombox.io. Boombox allows you to upload full mixes, stems, or multi-tracks, invite bandmates, collaborators, or clients to the project where they can leave time-stamped feedback on the tracks. And if you're working with clients and you wanna keep them from downloading the tracks until they've paid their bill, you can do that too. If you want to check it out for yourself, head over to boombox.io and sign up for a free account today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Now in part 31 of this series, I demonstrated how to write in real-time track automation using your mouse or knobs and faders on your MIDI controller. So to do this, you have to press shift option K, you have to assign your controller assignments, then you have to turn on a live automation mode such as touch, latch, or write, and then you press play and you record in your automation. With continuous controllers and pitch bend, it's common for effects to be pre-assigned to these controls within a synthesizer or software instrument. So for example, this melody track here is an ES2 instrument, and inside you'll see that there's already a modulation router that's pairing the modulation wheel to cut off too. So if I were to play a few notes on my MIDI controller and move the mod wheel, you'll hear this effect is already pre-assigned. The one thing that's a little tricky with assigned effects like this is you don't actually see the knobs or faders inside the instrument moving as you move the modulation wheel, but you can hear the effect. And then in the ES2, this is using a seven semitone pitch bend range, which can be assigned right here. Now this applies to other instruments as well, not just stock Logic instruments. Just open up any instrument of your choice and arm the track, play a few notes and move the modulation wheel and see if there is an effect that's pre-assigned. A lot of Logic's presets have modulation wheel pre-assigned to various effects, and a lot of third-party instruments also have modulation wheel pre-assigned. Now, the other thing about this type of automation is when you press A to bring up your automation, it's not gonna show up here in your track automation, but it's rather gonna be shown as these gray bars on the region. You can view this automation by double clicking on the region to open it up in the piano roll editor. And then what you can do is click here to show your MIDI automation or region automation. And then you can click here to select what parameter you want to view. So we have modulation wheel, note velocity, that's just the velocity of the notes, and then pitch bend. Additionally, if you wanna view it out here in the tracks area, you can press A to show your automation, but what you have to do is just click here where it says track to switch this over to region-based automation or region automation. And then you can select those same parameters here, modulation, note velocity, and pitch bend. So this type of region automation is written into the region rather than track automation, which is sort of written on top of the region. So the first thing I wanna do is just show you what this synth lead sounds like as is, and then I'm gonna show you how to write in your own automation and delete the automation that's there. So I've got my pitch bend pulled up and I've got the mod wheel pulled up. Let's give this a listen.
So at the tail end of some of these long notes, I'm dipping down the pitch with the pitch bend. I'm also adding in some just quick uh, little pitch glides throughout the lead. And then on the long notes, I'm sort of opening up the mod wheel to create this, you know, opening filter effect. Now, if I wanted to start from scratch, all I really need to do is click on this track, go up to mix, go to delete, and then select delete visible automation on selected track. And that'll go ahead and delete that automation. Now, the thing with region automation with MIDI CCs is you don't have to use a real-time automation mode here. All you need to do is hit record and arm the track, and you can play in the CC or pitch bend on top of the existing region. The main thing you got to remember here is you want to make sure that drag mode is not set to no overlap, and you also want to make sure in your recording settings, so go up to Logic Pro, Settings, Recording, you want to make sure that MIDI cycle on and cycle off are set to merge or overlap. With overlap, you're going to have to join the automation to the MIDI region. I just prefer using merge because then it just merges all of that MIDI automation into the existing region. So all I'm going to do is arm the track, hit record, and then play in my modulation wheel. For demonstration purposes, I'll stop there. Now, if I press A, I can pull up my region automation. You can see all of that automation that was recorded in. You can click and drag and uh, adjust the automation in any way you like, just like I demonstrated in a previous video. So next up, let's go ahead and record in some pitch bend. Again, all you have to do is arm the track, hit R to record, and play in the pitch bend. Okay, and to view my pitch bend automation, I'll just switch this over to pitch bend. And there's all of the pitch bend automation I just recorded in. One thing I do want to point out here is even though pitch bend is a dual layered MIDI message, as I explained in a previous video, in terms of the automation values that are shown, it's shown as zero as the center point, plus 63 as pitch bend all the way up, and minus 64 as pitch bend all the way down. And then once again, if I want to view this in the piano roll, I can still do that. You just open up your MIDI automation here and edit the automation in any way you like. Switch over to Mod Wheel, and I can do the same thing here. So that's how you can record region-based automation with MIDI CCs and the pitch bend. One other thing I want to show you is that if you want to make Logic ignore input from continuous controllers or the pitch bend, you can actually apply what's called an input filter for this. To get to this, you go up to File, Project Settings, and then you go to MIDI. And then from here, you're going to go to the input filter. What this does is it allows you to filter certain MIDI input. So any option you select here will be filtered. So if I want to have Logic ignore all CCs, so this will be all faders, knobs, the modulation wheel, sustain pedal, I can click control changes here, and all control changes or continuous controllers will be ignored by Logic. Likewise, if I want to turn off the pitch bend, I can do that here as well. You can even turn off the note input from your MIDI controller if you like. Now there's really three practical uses for this. If you have a MIDI controller with aftertouch, it's really easy to accidentally trigger the aftertouch. So I'll often find myself just turning off aftertouch and polyphonic aftertouch until I actually want to use it. Two, if you're afraid of bumping into other controls while recording automation, for example, it's pretty easy to bump the mod wheel 
while recording pitch bend and vice versa. So if you're working with pitch bend and you're afraid of bumping into the mod wheel, you could turn off control changes or vice versa. If you're working with the mod wheel and you're afraid of bumping into the pitch bend, you could temporarily turn off the pitch bend. And three, this is actually a lot more common than you might think, but older MIDI controllers can sometimes send erroneous CC data. So you might not even be touching your CCs or pitch bend, but the controller might still be sending CC data to Logic when you record, or even when you're not recording, maybe just when you have a track armed. I used to have an old 88 key CME controller that I used live quite a bit, and I definitely spilled some water and beer on it at gigs over the years. So the pitch bend would never quite recenter itself correctly, and the default volume fader would send erroneous messages as well. So in order to continue using that controller for note input, I would just turn off my control changes in pitch bend anytime I used that controller so I could still use it for note input with the keyboard. I'm just disabling or filtering the pitch bend and control changes. So that's the MIDI input filter, another really helpful feature if you're trying to omit certain controls from being recorded. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.